G'day, I'm Red Nectar, and I'm inviting you to get under the covers with MO Query. Now, if you know that MO Query is a Cisco ACI command line utility, then you're in a great place to start. But if not, I'll give you a language warning now. There are a lot of strange words coming up, and a lot of them begin with F. You might be better off going doing some research and maybe go and visit my blog, rednectar.net. Search for rednectar.net Cisco ACI configuration. Oh, and if you didn't know that Cisco ACI is Cisco's all singing, all dancing, software defined networking implementation, go and talk to Cisco or check some of the links below. Great. You're still with me, so you probably already know that MO Query is a bit of a strange beast. So I'm going to help you tame that beast. I'll show you exactly what to feed it to get your desired results. You can also ask for help to see exactly how to feed those morsels to MO Query. So let's start there. If you use the minus D option, you'll have to feed MO Query a distinguished name and MO Query will find that object in the management information tree and show you all there is to know about it. And the minus C option is even more powerful than that. With the minus C option, you can make MO Query produce information for an entire class of objects. So if you are going to get past first base with MO Query, you must understand how to manipulate MO Query using distinguished names and classes. Of course, a distinguished name is nothing more than a unique identifier for an object. The trick is to find out what a distinguished name looks like. So come on a little hunt with me and I'll show you how to find one. If you look here in the GUI, you can see the distinguished name for this tenant. It is everything in the URL past the first vertical bar. So you can take this distinguished name and feed it directly into MO Query using the minus D option, like this. And MO Query will respond and give you the same information as you see in the GUI. Plus a bit of extra just for fun. See this little bit of information at the top of the output? This cheeky piece of information unlocks the secret of the name of the class to which the distinguished name belongs, but not directly. To determine what class your distinguished name belongs to, you need to pluck out this little dot sitting here between FV and tenant. This won't be the last time you discover that MO Query likes to make you sweat a bit before giving up its secrets. But remember, using the minus D option means you are focusing on a single object in the MIT. If you ask MO Query for a distinguished name, you'll get one thing. No extras and nothing on the side. Of course, it makes perfect sense that querying a unique identifier would return a single object. But after a while, looking at single objects gets pretty boring. We'd better take a look at that minus C option, which lets you query a whole class of objects in the MIT. When you feed MO query a class of FV tenant, it can give you volumes of information too much to consume because it lists every attribute of every object of class FV tenant. Often it's best just to pick one attribute like its tenant's distinguished name or DN. So to tame MO query, I filter the output through grep to see just the distinguished names. Result, you get a very tasty list of tenants. Time out. Let's check that you're still with me. Firstly, do you understand that every object in the MIT is uniquely identified by its distinguished name? Okay, do you realize that the attributes of every object in the MIT are defined by its class. Great. So my final question before I go on is how did I know the name of the class that defines the attributes of the tenant was F V tenant? If you recall that I pointed it out to you from the output of the MO query minus D command, 
then that's great. Remember, I had to pluck out the dot between the FE and the tenant. But before I continue, I'm going to show you how you can get the same information from the GUI. At any point in the APIC GUI, you can right click on an object and select Open in Object Store Browser, which is almost a graphical version of MO Query, not as powerful, but easier to coax information from. And as you can see here, the class name is revealed without having to pluck dots out, along with all the values for all the attributes for that tenant, just like we saw with the MO Query minus D command. Are you ready to pull back the covers a little more? Because MO Query gets a lot more powerful if you combine the two options, minus D and minus C. So whereas MO Query on the class FVAEPG would list every application endpoint group in the whole system, an MO Query on the class FVAEPG combined with the distinguished name of Tenant9 would list just the EPGs for Tenant9 like this. But whoopee do, I still haven't shown you how to get anything from MO Query that you couldn't have determined easily from the GUI or ordinary show commands. But what about this one? An MO Query on all the subnets for Tenant9 with egret filtering out just the IPs and the DNs. Do you see how by manipulating the diet I fed MO Query, I was able to make MO Query give me all the subnets for Tenant9, no matter whether they were defined in a bridge domain or an, in an EPG. There is no GUI screen or CLI command that will give you that kind of information. See how these two subnets have DNs that show that they are defined under bridge domains, but this one is defined under the web server's EPG. Time to learn a new option for MO Query. This is the minus X option and the documentation for what comes after X is a bit sparse, but you'll find it in table number one of the Cisco APIC REST API configuration guide. So go and Google that, but not yet, I'm not finished. Here's the query to find all the objects that have been created for a tenant. Again, I'll stick with tenant nine, but add the minus X RSP dash subtree equals children option. This tells MO query to return all of the child objects for the class FV tenant, but of course, only for tenant nine. And just to keep the output manageable, I'll stick a filter on it so we see only the class indicator, the name of the thing, and its distinguished name. And now you can see that this tenant has child objects that you'll recognize. Here's a bridge domain, another bridge domain. This one is a service container that is created when the tenant was created, and so too is this monitoring policy. Here's two filters, two contracts, a VRF, and our layer three out another contract and an application profile. But did you notice there were no EPGs? And that's because the minus X option only asked for the children of the FV tenant class in the RSP subtree option. Another option would be to replace the word children with the word full. Wow, even with the filter, that yields lots of output. There's consumed contracts, provided contracts, and stuff that's far too serious for us at this stage. But if you're up for the challenge, see if you can work out which of the following would list just the EPGs for tenant nine. Remember the minus X RSP subtree equals option acts on the class, not the distinguished name. To help you choose, let me explain each one. Option A is asking for the entire subtree for the class FVAP, which is all application profiles and all descendants, i.e. children, grandchildren, etc. within the tenant. Now, 
This will work in the sense that it will give you the EPGs, but because the RSP subtree parameter is full, it's also going to give you all the child objects of the EPGs, which is linked to contracts, subnets, domain links, way more than just the children. If the minus x RSP subtree equals full was changed to minus x RSP subtree equals children, this in fact would almost make this option work. I say almost because it lists a little bit more than is required. It lists the name of the application profiles as well as the EPGs. Option B actually has the minus x RSP subtree equals children set, but this time it's acting on the class F the tenant. And since application profiles are the children of tenants, you won't see any output at all. In fact, you'll need to remember that little fact. Whenever you combine a distinguished name in a class in an MO query, you'll get nothing or garbage. If the class is closer to the root than the distinguished name. I'll repeat that because this fact is not immediately obvious here and caused me a lot of grief when I was trying to make sense of ML query. Although if you think about it long enough, it makes sense. It's like asking, give me a list of all the trees that are this particular unique apple when you are holding an apple in your hand. It doesn't make sense because a tree is not an apple, even if it is the bearer of apples. So remember, when combining minus C and minus D options, the class must be equal to or sit further out on the branch than the distinguished name. DN first, class second. Back to the question. Options C and D are going to produce identical results on my system because I have only one application profile. But you can probably guess that if I had more than one application profile, option C would list the EPGs for all application profiles, which makes it a better answer than D, which would only list the EPGs for a single application profile called two-tier underscore AP. So, now you know another item you can feed MO query, and I've shown you two variations. You can use the minus x RSP subtree equals children and minus RXP subtree equals full. But these variations act in conjunction with the class option. There's no use adding minus x RSP subtree equals children to a query on just a distinguished name. However, there is another variation that is designed to work with distinguished names. Unfortunately, there is a bug in MO query that prevents it working properly, and you see only one possible child object. Although you can see it working correctly in the Object Store browser. If you add minus x query target, equals children to a query on a distinguished name, you should get the child objects for that distinguished name, just like you do in the Object Store browser. But that is a discussion for another time. If you've learned something useful from this, hit that like button below to help it reach others. You can subscribe if you like as well. Who knows, one day I may make some revenue from this. In the meantime, don't forget to check out my blog at rednectar.net. Lots of useful ACI and some geeky stuff there as well. That's all from me. It's uh, time to come out now.